In this episode of Travelogs, we go in deep to check out what's on offer in China's newest new area, made up of three ancient counties. From the arts and crafts in Xiongtian, and the sounds and spectacles of Rongcheng, to the lotus paradise known as Anxin, it's definitely not a show to miss. Join us in Xiongan New Area. From Xiong'an New Area, established April 2017. So this place is expected one day to rival Shenzhen's special economic zone, as well as Shanghai's picture postcard Pudong. But that's not to say there's nothing here yet. There's actually plenty for us to explore, from underground tunnels to the Northern Lion Dance, as well as one of China's largest freshwater lakes. So we should check this place out before it takes center stage as a world-class destination. I've actually just arrived at Baigou Station, which is in Xiongxian, one of the three counties that make up the new area, and this is where our journey begins. My name is Zui. Join me on Travelog. Xiongxian County is the largest of the three counties by population. It's located in the southern part of Xiongan in Hebei Province, around 100 kilometers southwest of Beijing. If you can imagine the economic triangle formed by the cities of Beijing, Tianjin, and Shijiazhuang, the capital of Hebei. Xiongan sits in the middle, which makes sense, since its main function is to serve as the Triangle's development hub. Indeed, there are grand plans for the innovative modernization of this place, but they'll have to coexist with antiquity. For one thing, underneath the sprouting urban sprawl is a thousand-year-old network of tunnels. This is cool. It's like I'm under Hogwarts. <laughs> Researchers believe that Xiongxian County's Song Liao warfare tunnel was secretly constructed by the Song army to evade Liao invaders. Known as the Subterranean Great Wall, it features sophisticated masonry and a complex layout allowing the movement of troops and intelligence. The section I'm clambering through is around four meters underground and hovers at a constant but chilly 13 degrees Celsius all year round. It's a labyrinthine masterpiece that must have been absolutely backbreaking to build. Well, I reckon that's my weekly dose of exercise done. And to think that a thousand years ago, you know, soldiers were running up and down these tunnels carrying heavy military supplies and equipment. And only 220 um, meters of this tunnel are open to the public, but actually it stretches for 65 kilometers. No thanks. This是老哥 那这个厅里面是有什么用的这个厅啊在当时来说就是一个议事厅这砖里面您知道吗是树是吗植物这是麦秸怎么有麦秸呢当时砌这个工艺的时候它是用粘土和糯米再加上麦秸把这砖都砌起来当时没有水泥没有水泥它就会用这些材料把砖砌起来但是
，呃，当时在风水学上来说，我们叫它是一个五行柱。哦、五行柱呢，它有五个面儿、啊，五个面儿。但是呢，很多游客过来的话，数面儿就数不清啊，有数成四个面儿的，有数成五个面儿的。<笑>我觉得您可以试一下数一下。我可能数了三个面儿、啊。数出几个面儿。One, two, three, four. Five. <laughs> well, now that we've established that I can successfully count to five, I'm back outdoors on ground level, where it's 30 degrees hotter, but at least I'm less disoriented. In fact, out here in semi-rural Herbei, spaces are wide and open, perfect for aimless afternoon strolls and chancing across casual community gatherings. It's something that I'd never see living in Beijing, as much as that city still surprises me. Once upon a time, this area was regularly a battleground, and in order to protect themselves and their families, every able resident was trained in martial arts. To this day, Kung Fu culture is very much ingrained in the locals' lives, and every opportunity to take part is seized. But there are other reasons why Kung Fu is so prevalent here, something related to a bird of prey and the family name Chen. So, Eagle Claw is a specific type of um, Chinese martial art, and it's descended from Shaolin Kung Fu. These days, it's practiced all around the world. But you could say that the most famous practitioners of Eagle Claw were actually from Xiong County. And, in fact, the only recognized official inheritor of Eagle Claw is a guy called Mr. Chen, and I'm about to meet him. I've managed to locate his classroom, which is right next to his home. It's a very humble studio for someone with such an illustrious title, the sole successor of a national, cultural, and tangible heritage, which makes it all the more intriguing. Here, it's quite an honor to be one of his students. Eagle Claw, as you can imagine from the name, involves a whole lot of talent-like grappling. The repertoire of movements emphasizes gripping techniques, joint locks, and pressure point strikes. But of course, you must perfect the more basic forms first. Of course, it's never as easy as it looks. That's really a little bit, more than a few long years ago. And clearly, my brain has retained nothing. Uh, you have any, uh, this Chen, uh, more powerful movement? Ah, yes. That now we are trying to find the Chen. My feature is, um, yes. We have to hit the Chen. Ah, 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 hit the Chen. The body serpentine and the footwork swift. Strike first with a fist, return blows with a grasp of a talon. Got it? Like many forms of kung fu, the story of how eagle claw came to be is a tangle of folklore, conjecture, and fact. But what we do know is that there are three masters that most eagle claw schools can trace their style back to. One was Chen Zizheng. His eagle claw boxing skills were famous well beyond Xiongxian County, and his legend lives on right here. The master of Wang Chen Zizheng is my master's grandfather. He, he has a very big impact on the martial arts. Master of Wang Chen Zizheng, he has started to study martial arts. He has been studying for many years. A fascinating family legacy, right? There's no question that this birthright is taken seriously in this household, and there's no shortage of certificates and accolades proving it. But it's definitely not about keeping it in the family. This former Eagle Claw world champion now focuses on ensuring that the legacy will be continued through the generations, whether by a Chen or someone else, and he himself will keep practicing for as long as he can. My next stop involves a very different kind of art, albeit also heavily manual. Introducing Jinghuang bamboo carving, 
which is keeping alive skills practiced by craftsmen at China's last imperial court. So it has profound historical value, not to mention that the products are eye-poppingly exquisite. And lucky me, I get to meet another intangible cultural heritage inheritor, this time a Mr. Wang.这都是竹做的 just look at the designs, it's just so intricate, isn't it? Who could believe that the uh, the diet of pandas could be made into these exquisite artworks? This <laughs> Okay, so he's pretty much saying that I could never afford it. It is, after all, an imperial luxury. So until I've been assured that I'm directly descended from Chinese royalty, I'll just stick to envious appreciation. Oh, so they've transformed a, a house into a workshop. <laughs> the amount of craftsmanship and energy that's channeled into this sort of art always blows my mind. These experts spend a lifetime honing their skills to perfection. It would probably drive me crazy after three minutes. And even though bamboo isn't stone or steel, carving it requires substantial strength, concentration, and precision. I asked Mr. Chen to show me the process of Zhu Huang bamboo carving. Firstly, a suitable section of giant bamboo is selected and sawn, and then the green exterior is lopped off, leaving a thick yellowish tube. Zhu Huang literally translated means bamboo yellow. The bamboo is then shaved down to a one millimeter thin sheet, which is boiled, dried in the sun, then glued onto all sorts of bamboo or wooden objects and painstakingly carved. This Zhu Huang decorative veneer technique, having won Emperor Qianlong's approval, spread to various parts of China. Today, however, there's only one recognized inheritor of the art in Xiong'an New Area, and that's Mr. Chen. The honor is mine. Coming up next, ready for some raucous but remarkable folk entertainment? Well, you better be, because that's exactly what you're going to get. So perk up those ears of yours and keep your eyes glued to the screen. So, it's another day in Xiong'an New Area. Now, don't be deceived by its name or these tranquil morning scenes. Indeed, it's got the word new in there, but not that much has changed in the dawn habits of the locals. There's a lot of old tradition in Xiong'an, and believe me, sometimes it's anything but tranquil. <laughs> Playing badminton, you've got people dancing, and you've got a musical troupe behind me here. 
This one's particularly special, though. You can find badminton and uh, dancing anywhere in China. This one has a very local flavor. And uh, it's going to get you up in the morning. There's evidence that these ethnic Han folk instruments have been around in this area since the Song Dynasty a thousand years ago. Although it wasn't until later, in the Ming and Qing dynasties, that they became really popular. These days, enthusiasts gather regularly for a lakeside blow and bash. Why not? And, contrary to what you may think, it's not just the oldies who are passionate folk musicians. Here in Rongchun County, there are plenty of young fingers and lungs eager to keep the custom alive. I wouldn't say it's my uh, preferred musical genre, but it's quite moving to see the elderly watching and these little ones playing. I mean it. Wow, I was literally just blown away by that. <laughs> nice little orchestra performance. You have how old are you? I'm 34. I'm 34. You don't know how old are you? I'm 16. You're 16. You're 16. You're 16. Oh, you like more girls. Oh, you're more interested. Yes, you're more interested. You're more interested. You're more interested. You're more interested. I am just loving this. Even in this day and age, farming families often gather together in the evenings to share energizing folk melodies like these, here in Rongcheng. But as much as I'd like to stick around, something else equally as riotous is happening in another part of the county, and the sound is easily recognizable. An unusually large line dance troupe rehearsing in a schoolyard is attracting quite an audience, including myself. To be honest, my eardrums actually need a bit of R&R, &R, but this visual feast is too good to miss. Line dances are typically performed during Chinese New Year and at other festivals as a way of bringing joy and good luck. What we're seeing is the northern type of line dance, where the lion's coats are shaggier and they kind of resemble Pekingese dogs rather than big, wild carnivorous cats, don't you think? But whatever form of lion dance, it never fails to draw a crowd. Never mind that it's 40-something degrees in the sun today. At least, we're not the ones tumbling around in costume. Chinese New Year in Malaysia, even back in Sydney, but I've never seen anything like this. And that's because we're more familiar with the southern lion dances. You know, most of the Chinese diaspora is from the south of China. Well, this is a northern lion dance, and even though it's less symbolic and less ceremonial, it's more acrobatic, and that's because it's easily performed in the imperial court as entertainment. I like good stunts. I'm sure you do too. Impressive, huh? Coming up next on Travelogue, a comparatively calm day on a freshwater lake that's famous for its languid scenery, aquatic produce, and delightful lotus gardens.
lazy, languorous mornings on a boat. Well, not for everyone, I guess. This is Baiyang Lake, known in China as the Pearl of the North. It's a very popular escape for nearby city dwellers, but for the locals of Anjin County, it's a source of their livelihood. And it's their home. Isn't it just so gorgeous out here? And so peaceful as well, like eating on water. This is Baiyang Dian, or Baiyang Lake, which is the largest freshwater lake in the north of China. And in fact, Xiong'an Xinxi, or the Xiong'an New Area, was chosen specifically to be established in the three counties surrounding it because it's an important resource, and also it's got scenic ecology and potential for green development. Now, it's already a tourist attraction of the highest grading in China, that's 5A, and I guess you can see why. All I need is some good company and probably an esky full of ice-cold beers, and I'd be the happiest person on the planet. Baiyang Lake is a delicate web of waterways and ponds that for centuries has been renowned for its fishing. Local families go trawling every single day of the year, unless prevented by bad weather. But with this area being earmarked for transformation, the future is a little uncertain. Still, that's not going to keep them from the routine. According to the grand plan for Xiong'an New Area, the quaint, quiet waterside villages peppering Anxin County will eventually be rebuilt or relocated. So, before that all happens, I go for a little stroll through the alleyways. Bayang Lake isn't just a getaway from big, bustling, built-up cities. It's also a source of livelihood for a lot of the local fishermen around here. And they live in villages that you can visit, where you can go and check out old architecture and also to experience the local lives here. Well, for now anyway. And what else is excellent about Bayang Lake? You can eat the produce they catch. And double yolk salted eggs, a local specialty. Oh yeah. I'm about to indulge in a shameless Xiong'an banquet of crayfish, hot pot fish, and, well, don't forget the greens. Oh, Woo! Stevie, look at that. I'm so excited to uh, dig into some local fresh grubs. There's a bayang dian there. For staple food, We've got some corn patties and sticks made from wheat flour, which are kneaded and pulled and pressed to the side of the pot to cook. I've got to say, the smell is intoxicating. I'm not going to lie, the weight is killing me, just staring at the juicy, tender chunks of fish. I think it's time to stick my chopsticks in. I'll grab one of these um, noodle-like things. Oh! Oh, wow. It's really soft and silky. Ooh, I like the noodle thing too. Well, I'm certainly staying off the boat and going for a long stroll after that lunch. Don't want to be a sitting duck. Baiyang Lake covers an area bigger than the entire country of Malta. It's hard to believe that it dried up in 1982, but after heavy rains and some wetland protection work, it became the ecological utopia it is today. It's open for sightseeing throughout the four seasons of the year. In summer, swarms of daytrippers come to marvel at the blooming flowers of the Nalumbo Nosfera, or simply the lotus. 
Did you know that an individual lotus can live to over a thousand years old? A pretty awesome plant, hey? So Bayangtian is really famous for its vast lotus gardens, and this is one of them. It's home to 366 different species of lotus. That's one for every day of the leap year. Yay! The aquatic perennial has deep cultural significance in China. It's sacred to Buddhists, representing purity of the body, speech, and mind. But much of the aesthetically pleasing plant is also eaten, from its flowers and seeds to its leaves and roots. Raw, boiled, fried, braised, pickled, dried. It truly is a pretty awesome plant. Bayang Lake is also home to 198 species of wild birds and some domesticated ones like these. The technique of fishing with cormorants is dying out, but my feathery fear is very much alive. Okay, okay. Just don't, don't flap, please. Don't flap. Okay, so I've, uh, I've got a cormorant in my hand and I have a morbid fear of birds. <laughs> it's not a pigeon, so it's okay. All right, okay. <sighs> oh my gosh. <laughs> please don't poop either. Don't worry, I survived. It's back on the boat for one last glide down the crisscrossing channels of reed marshes, alluringly adorned with lotuses. What an idyllic way to end our adventure in Xiong'an before it steals a spotlight from Shenzhen and Shanghai's Pudong. Rongcheng and Anxin, these are the three counties that now collectively are known as Xiong'an New Area. And yeah, it might be a new area, but that doesn't necessarily take away the significance of the old. As you've seen in this episode, there's so much history and culture here that really needs to be protected and celebrated as this place takes off. And of course, there's Baiyang Lake. Now, I reckon it'll be really interesting to come back in 5, 10, maybe even 20 years just to see how this place has changed. My name's Zoe, and you're watching Travelogue.